Hello and welcome to Tete a Tete, France 24's flagship interview show. And our guest today is the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, Mohamed Shtaye. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's been one month uh, since the war uh, started. Uh, you're here uh, in Paris, I assume, to talk about the situation there and what you're hoping for. Let's begin with the ceasefire. Uh, you have been calling, Arab countries have been calling for a ceasefire. Israel doesn't want it. The U.S. doesn't want it. And the Europeans are not saying much. What are you here for, Mr. Prime Minister? We're here for... Um a conference on the humanitarian assistance for Gaza. And, uh, of course, uh, to speak about hum humanitarian aid under war conditions, the impact of that aid will be fully and totally diffused. So a condition to provide aid is to really reach a ceasefire. And uh, we will also address the conference asking the international community to go into that direction and really pressure Israel to reach a situation in which the war should stop. Because for us, the question is, how many lives should be really lost? Today, we have 10,000 Palestinians have been killed and more than 26,000 have been injured. More than 220 housing units have been partially destroyed or fully and totally destroyed, infrastructure and so on. So, and Gaza is under full siege. No, only the entry of 100 trucks, Gaza needs 500 trucks a day in order for you to feed the people. And certain areas of Gaza, aid has not been reaching the north of Gaza. So we need aid to go to all areas under bombardment, there is no way that this aid can reach. So we need an immediate ceasefire and that this situation should end. The Israelis don't want any ceasefire because today the Israelis are in the mood of revenge, genocidal revenge, collective killing, killing for the sake of killing. And the goals that they are setting, they will never reach these goals. So that is where we should ask the Israelis to stop the war. They will never eradicate Hamas because it's one of their official goals. Of course not. Why not? Because Hamas is not only in Gaza. Yes, and Hamas is an idea. It's not only a military structure or an organization in Gaza. Hamas is or in a the terrorist organization. Hamas is in the West Bank, in Lebanon, in Syria. Hamas leadership is in Qatar and everywhere. So this is to say that the goal is to eliminate Hamas is totally not going to happen because what you see today is that the war is on all Palestinians. 350 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank, 142 since October 7th. And the settlers now have been given arms. Ben Ghafir, one of the Israeli ministers, has been distributing. 27,000 machine guns have been given to settlers. What for? To kill Palestinians. But isn't Hamas to blame? When they did what they did on October 7th, they fully knew what was coming. I mean, what is happening today is terrible. It's sad. But you could have predicted no. it. <clears throat> Hamas knew what they were doing. They knew Israel would take revenge. You blame them for what they did. Look, my dear friend, if the Palestinian cause has started October 7th, it's one story. The Palestinian cause did not start October 7th. Gaza has been under siege for 17 years. The situation in Gaza is miserable, has been. And not only that, all the record of history, the problem of Palestine has started in 1948. But Hamas now says, we've done something that the Palestinian Authority was not able to do. We brought the issue back to the table through our actions on October 7th. Do you agree with them? Regardless, the issue for us is that the cause of Palestine has always been there. Of course, the number of sacrifices, number of Palestinians who have been killed, it did bring the whole attention of international community. Now that they are fully focusing, the Americans, the European, everybody is talking about the need for a political solution. And I think that is important that the international community, it's a pity uh, so, sometimes that you need such a huge a uh, number of people to be killed in order for the international community to, to get involved in trying to talk about a need for a solution. 
The U.S. administration, you've been deeply disappointed. Let's not mince words by the Biden administration. They made promises. They didn't fulfill them. Now, Antony Blinken, Secretary of State at the end of the G7 meeting, said the solution in Gaza, I quote him, must include Palestinian-led governance and Gaza unified uh, and the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority. We welcome the statement because it's exactly right that the Palestine question does not need partial solutions. The issue is not Gaza only. The issue is that you need a comprehensive solution that does include Gaza and the West Bank, including Jerusalem and so on. And that is where and that is what we have been calling for. We need this misery. The, we need this occupation to end. And there has to be a, an international intervention to really put serious pressure on Israel because the Israelis, they don't want a solution. The Israelis have always been wanted a security solution, not a political solution. Netanyahu and his cabinet, they wanted to fully and totally isolate Gaza in order for them to destroy every possibility of two-state solution. Biden, the Europeans, the Americans, everybody calls for two states. The two states are on the borders of 1967. But do they really mean it? I mean, uh, to this be is talk. With you, do they talk the talk or walk the walk? It's a pity that statements have been made and action has not been following the statements. You are right. It is time that the international community should, uh, should put Israel on the hook and that Israel should abide by the international law that should, should not occupy other people's territory by force and this occupation should end. If people are uh, sincere, including the Americans, because with all frankness, the Americans, they made so many promises that they have not been fulfilling their promises, including reopening the consulate in Jerusalem, including asking Israel to refrain from uh, construction of settlements. If the Americans cannot deliver Israel, then who can do that? Is the Palestinian Authority ready to go back to Gaza? Good question. <clears throat> Palestinian Authority never left Gaza. Well, in 2007, Hamas kicked That's a different Fata story. Out. That's a different story. But we never left Gaza alone. We are the ones who are providing uh, uh, assistance. We are the ones who are providing electricity. We are the ones who are paying for water. We are the ones who are developing all the infrastructure. And we are the ones who are paying salaries for no less than 39,000 Palestinians in Gaza who work for the authority. They're the doctors, they're the teachers, they are the, the media people, and so on and so forth. These are our people, and Gaza is an integral part of the Palestinian territory. What happens after the war? My main concern is today and not the day after. It doesn't mean that we don't think of the day after. The day after for us should look like one thing, that this misery of the Palestinians should end and no partial solutions and no reoccupation of Gaza and no forced transfer of Palestinians out of Gaza to be thrown in the deserts of Sinai and so on, as the Israelis wishing to do. And that is what the day after should look like. A day after should look like an independent, sovereign, contiguous state of Palestine on the borders of 1967, including Gaza, Jerusalem, and the West Bank. And including Hamas. Are you in talks with Hamas right now, or uh, is it totally out of the question to have them in the future? Because, as you say, it's not only a military power, it's also an idea, and an idea that's followed by many Palestinians. You know, we had four signed agreements with Hamas. I know. They it were never work. implemented. It, it, it never implemented. In my opinion... Given what's happened... In my opinion, that what is needed, really, is that general elections... Palestinians have been uh, calling for general elections. With Hamas? Elections with Hamas? Elections for everybody. Elections for every Palestinian. As, uh, I mean, you cannot say that I'm going to have elections that, to exclude this and that. Elections, it means general elections for everybody. Uh, last issue, obviously, uh, you just came from uh, Ramallah, uh, the West Bank. You mentioned uh, that there were incidents. Uh, people are concerned of a th about a third uh, intifada, uh, also protest against the Palestinian Authority, against its president uh, for essentially doing Israel's bidding. We, the West Bank, is under occupation. There are 755,000 Jewish settlers the army, the Israeli army, is encouraging into the cities, into the refugee camps, into the villages. So 
Israel is not allowing the Palestinian Authority to function within its own zone and domain. This Israeli government wants to destroy not only the two-state solution, but they want to destroy also the presence of the Palestinian Authority because their worry is that this authority that has an agreement with Israel and this authority is calling for end of occupation and this authority is an integral part of the Palestinian national movement. We and the Israelis... The relationship is a colonial relationship. Israel is occupying our country. And the Palestinians have every right to defend themselves. An occupier does not, is not defending himself. An occupier is in the mood of attack. Last question. President Abbas, as I said, is unpopular. Uh, he could do one thing. He could decide that the resistance should not only be uh, through nonviolent means, but maybe through uh, violent Uh, means, is this something that's feasible or is this totally out of the question? Look, the issue is not, you know, how is it possible for anybody to be popular if land confiscation is every day, Israeli incursions are every day, Israel is confiscating our money, we are not able to pay salaries to our staff. Palestinian private sector is in a very difficult situation. So Israel has created a miserable situation, not for the people, but for us to function as well. If you are employing law and order in this town, this refugee camp, and then the Israelis encourage and they go and kill three, four Palestinians, a funeral generates funeral. So the issue is not about popularity. President Abbas is a wise man. He wanted the best of his people. He knows very well that what is the approach to adopt today is this approach. Fatah had its own conference. It has adopted a strategy of popular resistance. Mohamed Shtaye, Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing on our show, and I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you.